late night news. The Howard government rules out raising taxes on super contributions. 30 years on, Vietnam veterans rally around Australia to honour their comrades. And an unlikely heroine at a Chicago zoo as a female gorilla saves a toddler who fell into her enclosure. The Late Night News with George Denikian. Good evening, but first, the Howard government today ruled out raising taxes on superannuation contributions in next Tuesday's budget. The opposition admitted its assault on the tough spending cuts is limited to just tinkering at the edges. Treasurer Peter Costello delivers the coalition's first budget in over a decade on Tuesday night, and he says it won't include reported tax increases on superannuation. You'll find on Tuesday night that that will not be the substance of the budget uh, at all. Instead, the budget's forward estimates will contain the One Nation tax cuts promised by Paul Keating to be paid as an additional 3% to super. Despite these assurances, the opposition believes the government will weasel out of it. Well, we can certainly afford it, and I think it's crucially necessary for that component to go into the super structure. And this admission from the shadow treasurer Labor's refusal to block supply means there's not much they can do to knock out harsh budget measures. So we're talking about the fiddling and at the edges, are we? Rather Fiddling at the edges rather than a fundamental assault. I think inevitably that's what we are reduced to. On increases to the higher education contribution scheme, there was a softening from Mr Evans. OK, but so that's a definite that. out. Well, not, no. Well, I'm just saying it may be possible to recraft. Six days ago, this was the line from Labor. And on the area of Hex, we will oppose the changes the government is suggesting. Mr Evans also wasn't prepared to oppose the broken promise of an additional Medicare levy. I'm not going to give you yes or no answers because we have to talk through this. And busloads of protesters left Melbourne today bound for Canberra. Upset at the Coalition's industrial relations reforms, they'll join tens of thousands of people outside Parliament tomorrow in one of the biggest demonstrations against a federal government. But this government, despite its promises, is certainly not a government for all of us. Jane Hinchke, 10 News. An emotional reunion for 30 Australian veterans of the Vietnam War. It's 30 years since Australian soldiers defied the odds, helping to defeat the North Vietnamese in the Battle of Long Tan. Today, the survivors returned to the scene of the bloodshed, along with another Vietnam veteran, Deputy Prime Minister Tim Fisher. Today, here at Nui Dat, on a site so well known to many of us for a seminal year of our lives, we acknowledge all those who have lost their lives. 18 Australians and scores of Vietnamese were killed at Long Tan, considered the most significant battle of our 10-year involvement in the Vietnam War. At home, thousands of veterans, their families and friends attended solemn and often emotional memorials in honour of dead comrades. The 30th anniversary of the decisive battle at Long Tan gave special significance to ceremonies across the country. Task force was, um, was uh, on standby and they were all grateful that, they, that we stopped them where they did. The 18 Australians who died at Long Tan were remembered along with those who died in other battles. In Brisbane, hundreds turned out in Anzac Square, and on the city's south side, armoured personnel carriers similar to those used in Vietnam joined a parade. In Tasmania, Vietnam veterans held a reunion in Launceston last night, and then marched through the streets this morning. The South Australian governor unveiled a new memorial in Adelaide, dedicated to those who served, suffered, and died in Vietnam, Malaya, Borneo, and Korea. And in Melbourne, they gathered at the Shrine of Remembrance. Speakers likened the bravery at Long Tan to the Anzac spirit in Gallipoli. Long Tan may have been 30 years ago, but the battle still lives in the minds of those who served in Vietnam. They don't want Australians to forget. Quite a heroic battle, Long Tan, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, uh, it was uh, a difficult thing for the men who survived from it, too. Although numerous small functions to commemorate the day were held in Sydney, Veterans will attend a bigger ceremony on Tuesday. John Ross, 10 News. Pop singer Kate Sobrano has swung her support behind Perth police as they hunt the killer of Jane Rimmer. In a highly unusual campaign, the singer is asking anyone with information to come forward. Sarah's family and friends, you're agonising over the events of that weekend. 
because you think someone close to you may be involved in her disappearance. In a highly unusual move, WA police searching for Sarah Spears have used singer Kate Sobrano to appeal to anyone who may know the offender but are too scared to come forward. You're worried because you've noticed a change in their routine or behaviour. A high-profile policeman has also joined the appeal. I need your help desperately. Actor John Wood, a well-known TV cop, chosen above our own police commissioner to help flush out Jane Rimmer's killer. Cast your mind back about ten weeks to that awful time when Jane Rimmer disappeared at Claremont, Saturday the 8th of June. With this investigation, we're using every means possible. Jane Rimmer's body was found in dense bush two weeks ago. The nearby discovery of more bones yesterday put police on full alert. Although a pathologist ruled they weren't human, some bones were taken for further checks. Whatever it was, ease your mind. Call Crime Stoppers now, please. Alison Blanksby, 10 News. Still ahead in the late night news, the amazing story of the gorilla who saved a young boy. And beer swelling Aussies getting a whole new image overseas. An amazing rescue at Chicago's Brookfield Zoo today as an unlikely heroine rescued a boy who fell almost four metres into a pit near seven gorillas. The three-year-old boy apparently lost his balance and plunged onto a concrete apron near the gorillas. But a female named Binti, with her own baby clinging to her, cradled the crying youngster. She then carried him gently to a gate and laid him at the feet of waiting paramedics. Zookeepers say they had fire hoses trained on the animals to drive them off if it seemed they were going to hurt the boy. However, none showed any aggression to Binti, as uh, Binti w indeed went to the rescue. Doctors say the boy suffered head injuries, but expect him to recover. The violent clashes between riot police and students in South Korea have continued into their sixth day. Security forces have been ordered to use anything but bullets to end the standoff. Student politics in South Korea. This is the summer riot season, and this year it's more vicious than ever. The students, about 4,000 of them, are left-wing militants who want American troops out and quick unification with communist North Korea. They pride themselves on being some of the world's most educated and brazen rioters. The police have had enough. They're now under orders from the president to stamp out the militant students' movement once and for all, using every means other than bullets. The police have been taking one faculty after another. The students' union has been turned into a factory for Molotov cocktails. But the science faculty, Korea's finest, is still in the hands of the rioters. Riot police outnumber the students five to one, and they have enough tear gas to last them a lifetime. But they're reluctant to storm the science building behind me where the hardcore of the students are holding out because the students are threatened to use chemicals against them. But the students are on their own around the barricade campfire. Their drive for unification is seen by most people in this wealthy country as unrealistic and dangerous. Jordan's King Hussein has appealed for calm while visiting towns racked by rioting over his government's move to more than double grain prices. Protesters say the violence will spread to the capital Amman if the huge increases aren't withdrawn. The security forces have been ordered to use an iron fist against the rioters who've been fighting back. Trouble was expected when the government doubled bread prices. In Karak, the biggest city in southern Jordan, they've been running battles for two days. The army has been sent in to crush the riots, the most serious in Jordan for seven years. Helicopters flew over the city, dropping tear gas. This evening, King Hussein went to Karak to try to defuse the tension. Earlier, he had dissolved the lower house of parliament, where the bread price rise had been criticized. The king might now distance himself from his prime minister, who's being blamed by the rioters for cutting food subsidies on the orders of the International Monetary Fund. Bread is a vital part of the Jordanian diet, especially for the poor. There were hopes that peace with Israel would bring better times and more food, but they're still waiting. The bread riots have spread to three other towns in southern Jordan. The king is blaming left-wingers. Tonight, the security forces are said to be sending in reinforcements to try to stop more trouble. More than 10,000 people have rallied in Chechnya to support Russian envoy Alexander Lebed's peace initiatives. 
Although the terms of the truce have been agreed, sporadic clashes are still being reported. If this is the end of the Chechen conflict, it was a fitting final act. Surrounded by the fighters and soldiers who have waged this savage war, military commanders from the two sides sat down to talk in detail about how peace might come. The Chechen leader, Aslan Maskhadov, emerged simply to say that he had signed the ceasefire. His Russian counterpart hinted at the war weariness many on both sides now feel. These Chechen fighters and some Russian officers may not like the deal, which divides Grozny for the moment into separate military zones, but if it sticks, the credit will go to Alexander Lebed, the former presidential candidate whose intervention established the grounds for talks, although not everything is going his way. The interior minister, Anatoly Kulikov, who three months ago signed a short-lived deal with the Chechens, but who Mr. Lebed said should be sacked for mishandling the war, has now been told by Boris Yeltsin he can stay in office, an indication that even when the fighting is over, there'll be political scores to settle in Moscow. In an unprecedented move, the Queen asked four freelance photographers to respect the royal family's privacy while they holiday in Scotland. However, hordes of other photographers were on hand when the first of the royals arrived. The snappers were in attendance as the royal party disembarked from Britannia en route to their summer holiday at Balmoral. Letters went out from the Queen solicitors to four freelance photographers two weeks ago, asking them not to enter the private Balmoral estate without permission. In the spring, they'd intruded on an earlier royal break. Only one of the four had replied by last night's deadline. The estate's crisscrossed by public roads. And while the family is happy for the public to enjoy the countryside, it wants the four photographers not to spy on a private holiday. Other snappers think the antics of some freelancers aren't legitimate news gathering. Quite extreme lengths, um, crawling through the undergrowth, encroaching on the estate when, when the royal family are there. Um, but at times they are getting photographs that basically don't warrant publication. This is grim, not a happy lady at all. But newspaper editors say they would use most scoop pictures. If you had the Camilla kissing picture, or for, or for that matter, you know, what an amazing story if Diana and Charles were seen to be embracing or something. Um, would I then not run the picture? Of course I would run the picture, but public interest would then be my defence in doing so. It's thought to be unprecedented for the palace to write to individual photographers in this way, and legal action to stop harassment isn't ruled out. European advertisers are being forced to revamp the image of Australians they use in commercials. As public perceptions change, once highly successful British television commercials for 4X beer have been scrapped in favour of the 90s image of Aussies. For 12 years, this is how 4X beer has been sold to the British. But lately, the beer-swilling bushy hasn't been cutting it. Beer sales have dropped, so enter the new bloke. And why I love her so. We identified and researched the fact that people had a different position, a different perception of Australians and of Australia, and that we needed to move on to catch up with this. He's younger, quieter, and more urbane though he still drinks out of a pint glass. One thing that's not been lost is the sense of humour. The new campaign's being launched this weekend in the biggest advertising blitz yet seen in one night of British television. And it's what's on British TV which has forced the change. Advertisers say the proliferation of normal Australian programs here has virtually dissolved the old Ocker or Bushman image, particularly for the young. In London, Jeff Waters for 10 News. Still to come in the late night news, safety experts examining an airliner after its second emergency. And winter returns with a vengeance, freezing all of southeastern Australia. But first, the Howard government today ruled out raising taxes on superannuation contributions in next Tuesday's budget. The opposition admitted its assault on the tough spending cuts is limited to just tinkering at the edges. Treasurer Peter Costello delivers the coalition's first budget in over a decade on Tuesday night. 
Health assurances the opposition believes the government will weasel out of it. Well, we can certainly afford it, and I think it's crucially necessary for that component to go into the super structure. And this admission from the shadow treasurer Labor's refusal to block supply means there's not much they can do to knock out harsh budget measures. So we're talking about the fiddling at the edges, are we? 30 years on, Vietnam veterans rally around Australia to honour their comrades. And an unlikely heroine at a Chicago zoo as a female gorilla saves a toddler who fell into her enclosure. The Late Night News with George Denikian. Good evening. Late night news. The Howard government rules out raising taxes on super contributions. And he says it won't include reported tax increases on superannuation. You'll find on Tuesday night that that will not be the substance of the budget uh, at all. Instead, the budget's forward estimates will contain the One Nation tax cuts promised by Paul Keating to be paid as an additional 3% to super. Despite these